In this video, we'll discuss the features on David Berkowitz's face that point to a clouded and misguided consciousness, and the marker on his face that shows the misuse of life force. Enjoy. Hey everybody, today we've got the son of Sam, David Berkowitz. People had asked for me to read him, so here I am reading David Berkowitz. So if you're new to the channel, please go watch the five minute crash course face, face reading video. There are terms and terminology that I'm going to use in this. And if you've never seen a face reading, you really need to go watch that. You're going to be a bit lost and it just helps you have a framework for what face reading is and isn't. So that being said, with David Berkowitz, we're going to talk about his Shen, the evolution of how a person's spirit changes through the choices they make and how the disposition and the look of the face changes based off of what we choose to do internally and externally in the world. The other piece that we're going to talk about is his... His, his liver system, he's got really dominant eyebrows. We're going we're gonna to talk about that and then talk about um, the trustworthiness of a face because people have been asking about this. And whenever I read a serial killer, people are always wanting to know more about that. So we're going to dive into all these things. So first and foremost, a little backstory. This guy killed a number of people. I think it was, don't quote me, but I think six or seven people in the late 70s injured seven or eight more. And said the son of Sam was the name of a demon living inside of a Labrador retriever. And there was a period of time that David Berkowitz was a practicing Satanist. He was doing satanic rituals. He was attempting to invoke Satan into his, you know, into his body. And this is the thing, you know, when people talk about this, um, whether you believe in God or not, or whether you believe in, you know, Satan or not, I don't care where you sit on the spectrum of life, whether you're agnostic or atheist or God-centered, the point is, if you want to, if you think of it like this, if we think of God as the highest possible good in life, and that some of us, some people, decide to personify that and make that a conscious living entity in some capacity, a super consciousness that is attuned right to the highest possible good, Satan would be the opposite of that, the worst bad, right, the baddest of the bad, the darkest of the dark, and so whether you think those are you know, personified consciousnesses or not, when a person is gearing their energy and their focus and embodying one of those two directions, that does matter, you know, whether it's symbolic or people think it's real or not, where we direct our life force, it matters. So they say, you know, where your energy go, where your mind goes, your energy goes. Very true in the context of the East. So let's talk about the evolution of his spirit first. So first and foremost, if you look at his pictures when he is younger, he's got this kind of dull apathy, this haziness. So when they talk about that, the eyes are seen as the gateway to the soul. The soul, okay, is regulated by the heart organ in Eastern philosophy. The heart organ itself houses the soul. So when we see the eyes doing this, it's said, it can, be in, it can mean a number of things, okay? But one is heart disease. Literally, like the lens is starting to close because there's suppression or hatred, excessive hate and anger can cloud the spirit and make the eyes hazy. The hazy eyes, the sleepy eyes is not a favorable trait in face reading. Typically it's like, it's a disharmony of some kind. So he had this look in his youth and this look you can find in serial killers or sometimes in people right after they've committed a murder. Please know in face reading, if you see this feature, you know, in someone with hazy eyes, don't be like serial killer. Like that's not how it works. That doesn't mean they're a serial killer. This feature can show up on very good people. It just means you want to think it relates to the heart. There's something going on. So we have to put all these pieces together when we're face reading and try to average everything out. It's not easy, but that's how it works. So as he got older and when he was in prison, he did become a born again Christian and the disposition and how his eyes emit light did change. And his face did get quote unquote luckier as he got older. It got softer and he lost that apathetic cold affect that he was carrying. It did go away. And so, you know, he is born again and he does truly believe that God forgave him. And he has, you know, he's spent the last, I don't know how many years, you know, preaching to people. He's been trying to get the Bible into people's hands. And look, I'm not saying that that's like gets him out of the get out of jail free card or it fixes anything. But in terms of a person going in that direction, I do think is better than to have no remorse for the killings and to have no, no sympathy for the families. And I've watched a lot of interviews with a lot of serial killers, you know, uh, Richard Ramirez, Ted Bundy, these guys, when they're doing it, either have no remorse or it looks scripted. And you're like, like Ted Bundy, when I watched him, I thought you're saying all the right things, but I do not buy it. Something in the Shen, something in his face, I don't buy this guy. 
I actually believe him. I think he's genuinely sorry. Doesn't fix anything. I think he should spend the rest of his life in prison. He's never getting out. I think it's where he should stay. There are consequences to actions like this, absolutely. But he does seem genuinely remorseful. And it shows in his face. His face does look like it changed for the better. So all of that being said, he's got a hanging dagger, this carved line right in the center between his two eyes. This is seen when we see these deeply carved lines. This is a misallocation or misuse of Jing. It's, it's the, the improper wielding of life force. So that can come from too much work at the CEO job. That can come from lying to your clientele for many years and robbing people of money. It can also come from murder. It just means misuse. Again, you know, don't, if you see this feature, it doesn't mean serial killer. Don't think of it like that, but it means a misuse. In his youth, he didn't have it. When he was in prison in the 80s into this jailhouse interview, you can see it starting to form. Fast forward 15 years, it's even darker. And now that he's in his 70s, it is deeply carved. So that is always, if you see that mark on someone, just know something is not being expressed appropriately. Something is out of whack. So definitely in his case, I would argue murder. Now, big dominant eyebrows. This is a wood feature uh, run by the liver energetics. The liver in Eastern medicine regulates anger, frustration, hostility, rage, all of that kind of stuff. So when we see this, it's, again, you see bushy eyebrows doesn't mean killer, but what it means is a surplus in that system, which means that person can have, you know, a, a propensity to lean that way. So with him makes a certain amount of sense, given he killed people. And he also had the unibrow. So he had hair growing here. When we see that, that's also an extra surplus in the liver system. So again, you want to think of face reading as a two way street. Here's what the theory says. Here's what the person did. And does that make any sense? Is there any kind of congruency with him? I would argue that it does. So, you know, face reading is not about being predictive, but it should help you be a bit more intuitive. You know, and if you don't buy into intuitive processes in any capacity, face reading is not for you. A lot of it has to be intuitive and abstract. That's just the way it rolls. It, the nature of the practice is like that. And that's very hard for some personalities and that I understand. And if that's the case, face reading is probably not for you. And that's all right. I'm not going to, you know, get to everybody and this will not speak to everybody. So that's life. Now, in my other video that I have, know a trustworthy face in 30 seconds. You can check that up right up here. If you haven't watched that, pause this, go watch that. And then you overlay a triangle, which is the fire element shape, which is the, the shape of spirit, quote unquote. And you put it over someone's face and you track this middle eye right here. And then you let your eyes peripherally diffuse through the rest of that triangle and you get a sense. But you track right here and then kind of watch the rest of the face. I did that with his face here in his youth during the time of the killings when he was arrested. Something in this face has never left a good feeling in me. Something is unsettling about it. If I had looked at this and didn't know who he was, would I think serial killer? No. I'm on a level with you. No, I would not. But something about it doesn't quite sit right. There's something kind of just cold and dull. And it was always like that. Um, I had seen his picture many times years back and I didn't know who he was. And it always left me a little uneasy. But um, this is a great technique in terms of knowing a trustworthy face. It's the feeling you get. And that feeling, you know, trust, trust to one person and trust to another, it's going to be a little relative. You know, some of us might have more moral flexibility with a person. So, you know, or moral flexibility in terms of our standards of what's okay and what's not, you know, are you willing to steal for your family? Are you a robber, quote unquote, across the board, if you're stealing to keep your kid alive? Are you? Some people would say, yes, it's robbery is robbery. And some people would say, no, it's robbery, but for a good reason. And so we all have different flexibilities. That's why you have to kind of put this triangle over people's faces and let your system read their system. And that's, that's the equation. Now, in looking at his, his uh, natural face, his public persona and inner persona, to be honest, I really would have thought that his his public persona, which looks more aggressive, more dominant, I thought that would have been his inner persona. The fact that these were like this kind of throws me. His inner persona, while analytical because the eyes are close set and a little more wood, which is technically a little running more towards the anger side, he doesn't look like a dangerous person. And that's the scariest part, I think, about human beings is that these types of people who are just sitting on these things can really slide under the radar, you know, even if we know how to read faces. So, it's pretty, pretty interesting in that regard. But this last piece, when we're talking about Shen and, you know, we mentioned this before, but I want to tie this piece in. People have a, a tough time with this idea of Shen, like, because a lot of it boils down to the look on their face. What's the feeling it gives you? People are like, that is nonsense, you know, and I can really understand like, all right, 
fair enough. It sounds like nonsense to some, but think of it like this. We've all seen someone's face. We've all looked into their eyes and said, that person gives me a bad feeling. Why is that? What is that? And that's a hard question. I can't answer it fully, but there is something there and human beings do that. And we can sense and we kind of know sometimes, but the choices we make, how we live, the things we do, how we choose to utilize and wield our life force into this crazy adventure we call life, into this 3D interactive simulation of sorts, changes the way the face looks. Mind and body are not separate. Therefore, when we do things and we make decisions inside the mind, things on the outside change. Look at this picture from this soldier from 1941 before the war and then 1945 after the war. It's the same guy. But look at the look in his eyes. Look at the wrinkles. Look at the mouth. Look at that face. Those are two completely different people. And I assure you that man on the right has had to kill some people. That is the thousand yard stare. That is a person who has become or had to adopt the killer instinct. And so this is just case in point. People's faces change. And that's only in four years. So how we navigate our internal terrain is going to reflect on the face. And that's the thing to remember about face reading. And when you're reading Shen and reading people, Look at people's faces, get a sense, get a feeling, because it is, in some capacity, indicative to how they lived and what they've chosen. All right, chill. Take care.